Hi friends, a lot of students have this doubt about GMAT versus GMAT focus edition. What are the changes? What has changed essentially? So, let me actually take you through the differences between GMAT and GMAT focus edition. Before uh, you begin, uh, just let me tell you about GMAT point. So, Krakow has GMATpoint.com where we have created a lot of content for GMAT, especially focused at the GMAT focus edition. Uh, we have 2000 solved questions with video solutions. So, if you are looking for uh, a way to prepare for this GMAT focus edition, please do visit gmatpoint.com. So, let me start with the difference between GMAT and GMAT focus edition. So, the first thing that you will actually see is that the exam has become more streamlined. They have cut down on the number of sections. So, earlier there used to be four sections quant, VARC, integrated reasoning and uh, analytical writing assessment. So, instead of four sections now, you have only three sections. So, the three sections are quant, VARC and you have a third section which is data insights. It is kind of loosely based on the integrated reasoning, but this is a more fleshed out section. There are more questions in data insights than there were in integrated reasoning. Earlier integrated reasoning was not part of your GMAT score. Your GMAT score was only based on quant and VA. Now, your actual GMAT focus edition score is based on all three parts which is quant, VARC and DI. All three are equally weighted and come part as part of your GMAT uh, focus edition score. So, essentially now the instead of four sections you have three sections. The length of the test has also become shorter. Earlier it was over three hours. Now it has become 2 hours 15 minutes. So, essentially they have streamlined the test as such, remote things that they felt unnecessary and made it smaller and shorter and uh, more focused on what the skills needed are. Now, the second uh, change that has happened is that the portion has also gone down. Most importantly, they have removed grammar and sentence correction and they have removed geometry. So, if you struggled with grammar and sentence correction in the original GMAT, this will be a very happy news for you because essentially how much you have to prepare has gone down. Uh, for I would say that GMAT focus edition is in fact a boon for all those who have prepared for CAT because a lot of people who have prepared for CAT were weaker the grammar and sentence correction but were stronger in quant. But because their quant and integrated reasoning was kind of underappreciated, they were not scoring very high in the GMAT original score. But now because you have two out of three sections which are kind of quantitative based, you have a better chance of scoring well in this as compared to your peers who are not that used to high level of quant as such. So, I would say that this change Firstly, reducing the content that is required, removing geometry, removing grammar and sentence correction has made it easier for many students who have actually prepared for CAT to do very, very well in GMAT. Now, another change that has happened is in the scoring mechanism. As I mentioned earlier, in the original uh, GMAT, only two parts of your four part exam were actually considered in the final GMAT score that was used. Your uh, analytical writing and integrated reasoning were actually seen by the uh, colleges that you submitted your score to, but they were not part of your GMAT score. So, they were not part of the filtering mechanism as such. Here, all three sections have equal weighted. So, your DI score is also part of your final GMAT FE score as such. Now, you might consider that this is a disadvantage, but it is actually an advantage. Now, what has happened earlier, the GMAT score would range from 200 to 800. 740, 750 was considered a very good score as such. Now, over here in GMAT Focus Edition, the scores range from 205 to 805, but anything above 650 or 680 is considered a good score. Now, why has that happened? Why have the average score required gone down? Why are people scoring lower on Focus Edition than they scored in the original GMAT? That is because Data Insights has uh, played a role in lowering the overall score that is needed. It has uh, increased the difficulty of the exam, especially for those who are not uh, very, very good at quant. And in terms of Indian students versus international students, Indian students historically did very well in the quantitative section, did very well in the integrated reasoning section. They did poorly than the international students in many parts of the OG exam, especially grammar and sentence correction. So now, since two parts of the exam are quantitative, you have an advantage and in fact, there is a very good chance that you will score better in the focus edition than you did in the OG. For me particularly, the highest score that I got in OG was 770 and I scored 785 in the focus edition because again, for me, quant and data insights were actually strengths, they were not weaknesses. So, my score didn't actually go down, it went up because I could do better in these two sections. So, for a lot of people who are actually uh, preparing for CAT, I would say that this is something that is to your advantage. These are changes that are positive for you.
Now one more thing that uh, is changed is how, how the scoring occurs. So I said that uh, the scoring is between 205 to 805 and 690, 680 is a very good score as such. Now what I would suggest is that the individual scores are also changing. So earlier your score would be 1 to 60, 1 to 60 uh, for like quant, 1 to 60 for uh, 1 to 8 for integrated reasoning and uh, 1 to uh, 0 to 6 for the analytical writing. So that part has been removed completely. Now for all the three sections, your score varies between 60 to 90. So you would say the granularity is lesser, 60 to 90 is only a 30 point range. But I see that the granularity is actually better in terms of distinguishing between students who are not good at quant versus those who are very good at quant. So the granularity, earlier basically if you are very good at quant, you would get a uh, 60 on 60 or a 58 on 60 or a 59 on 60. If you are not so good, you would get a 54 on 60 or 55 on 60. But many people would actually end up with like 40 or 42 on uh, the verbal reasoning part which would drag down their overall score much lower. Now here what has happened is that here because you have 60 to 90, there is much granularity between students who are scoring well in quant versus students who are scoring well in the verbal reasoning portion versus students how they are scoring the DI portion. So in fact the granularity I feel has increased in this focus edition which means that if you are good at quant versus you are very good at quant, there is actually a difference that is visible in the scores as such. So again I would say this helps you especially as your Indian student who has practiced for CAT, this is an advantage. Now lastly I will say that one more positive change that has actually occurred in the GMAT is they have increased the uh, transparency of the exam. So how have they increased the transparency of the exam? Earlier you had to spend 30 extra dollars to buy the enhanced score report. Now in this focus edition, the enhanced score report is added for free. You can see exactly where you have lost marks, what type of uh, questions you lost marks in. I will uh, uh, share my report along with this video so you can check the report. So essentially that report is a very detailed report telling you exactly what type of questions you actually uh, answered correctly, what type of questions you answered incorrectly. So if you give the focus edition one time, it will help you quite a bit in understanding which areas you need to actually improve in. This is a huge improvement over the OG where it was kind of like a black box. You did not have a good idea of where you actually went wrong, what questions you did wrong. Here you know how many questions you did incorrectly, what was the time taken by you for the correct questions, by the for the incorrect questions. You can even see whether you are uh, uh, like what is your percentile in different parts of the exam. So for arithmetic what is your percentile, for algebra what is your percentile. So this depth of analysis is extremely good and the fact that it is free is extremely good and positive for students. The last and biggest change I would say which is also very pro student is the ability to review the questions. So earlier when you submitted a question you could never see it again. Now this has been changed. So at the end of the section after you have solved all the 21 questions of quant you will get a, a, a chance to actually review the question. So you will see a prompt where, you, where you, all the 21 questions will be there. You can mark some of the questions for review and you can revisit them later at the end of the section and you can then see the question and say that okay uh, do I want to change my answer or uh, I can recalculate I can try to change my answer as such. So the ability to review the question and change the answer is a huge improvement because now if you are not sure about a particular question, not sure about a particular answer, you can mark it for review, try give an answer and move forward. And at the very end of the section, you can give it more time to solve the question again and try to get to the correct answer. So again, there are so many positive changes which are pro student, pro student, particularly students who are good at quant and I feel very, very pro Indian students. So if you are an Indian student or a student who is good at quant, who is wondering, should I give GMAT focus edition or not? I would highly recommend that you give it because it is something that you are going to do better at than the original edition as such. So with that, uh, I would uh, leave you guys and thank you for tuning in and please do check out gmatpoint.com. We have tons of questions with solution videos and these will help you quite a bit in preparing for your focus edition.